in Polk County, we are so fortunate to have nonprofits that work in every facet of community service. And today we have one of the most amazing nonprofits that we have going in our county with us, Heartland for Children. Um, and Heartland for Children is, is well known for strong families that lead to strong communities. I'd like to introduce the CEO of Heartland for Children, Terry Saunders, Kim Daughtry, Chief Community Relations Officer, and Kathy Graydon, Director of Education and Community Relations. Today we're going to be talking about um, the Protective Factors Framework, am I correct? Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And I'm going to ask you, Kathy, if you don't mind, if you would kind of tell us what those five protective frameworks are that we're looking for. Okay. Well, the Protective Factor, fram factor Framework is built on the, um, the knowledge that families, if, if communities and families have protective factors, then we know that they're stronger families and healthier families. And so there are five protective factors that are recognized in Florida, and one is um, social connections. And so we know that families that are connected socially um, are healthier. Nurturing um, and attachment, uh, um, knowledge of parenting and child development. And um, I, I have my list here, but um, concrete support in times of need. So uh, the ability for families to get help with uh, mental health services, um, housing, financial support, that kind of concrete support is really helpful for families. Um, and now I think I, did I get them all? I think you did and just not a test, them. I promise. Okay. No, you were you're perfect, you were perfect. Um, Terry, if you could, tell us a little bit about Heartland for Children and, and really the region that you serve because we're blessed to have you guys here in Polk County with us, but it's, it extends. It's farther than that. Yes, yes. Actually, Heartland for Children is the local not-for-profit organization that's responsible for redesigning the child welfare system or the foster care system for Polk Highlands and Hardy County. And we were founded in 2004 specifically for this purpose. And our legislators in the late 1990s and early 2000s, they recognized that the child welfare services and the foster care services for the state of Florida were not working well. And so they recognized that child welfare really is bigger than government. Mm -hmm. And they um, developed a new model. It was a really innovative model of having local not-for-profits actually take over the work of the foster care system and managing that network of services for children who have been victims of abuse and neglect. So that's what our role is, is to make sure that we're meeting the needs of all of the children in our community that have been victims of abuse and neglect. And we have recognized, and our board of directors has recognized, how important it is to prevent children from ever having to experience abuse and neglect. And so that's why we really try and get out and promote the five protective factors and that framework and making sure that we're building strong families throughout our community. We know that, that, that having safe, stable, nurturing relationships mm -hmm. is primary for children to be able to grow up safe and healthy. That is outstanding. How many children do you serve within the region that you cover? Right now we have about around 1,800 children between ages 18, 0 to 18 mm -hmm. that are actually in our system of care and so they may be living in foster care with foster parents, they might be residing in group homes, many of them are living with relatives, maybe an aunt or a grandmother has taken the children in. Um, so that um, the parents can get their needs met and, and get back to being able to be healthy parents. So between zero and 18, around 1,800 children, mm -hmm. we're very fortunate in that we're able to continue to work with kids that age out of the foster care system. And so we're able to provide them support and services and guidance and um, assist them as they're continuing their education and transitioning into the, the world of work. Mm -hmm. And we can work with them up until their 23rd birthday. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. That's exciting because, you know, in our community, I work with a lot of kids also, and, and there's so many young adults out there, 20, 21 years old, that mm -hmm. you know that if they were thrown out in the middle of the world, that that may not be the best place for them. So it's very exciting that you have those services available. Mm -hmm. Now, when talking about the perfect protective factor framework, boy, that is a tough thing to say <laughs> a couple of times fast. Um, when talking about how, how do you go out and actually establish the resources for parents, grandparents, guardians, um, where do they find those resources and, and how is this implemented? Sure. <clears throat> Jane, I think it's very important for us to spend a few minutes talking about 
that because we are a not-for-profit and we are a community-based care agency, we've spent nine plus years here locally building relationships, working with whether it's our faith-based community or local businesses or our schools. Um, many of the programs that are out there that are serving families um, and getting support and resources into homes before harm ever occurs to a child is very critical. And I think a lot of it has to do with um, excellent communication into our system of network from those providers letting us know where the gaps of services are, as well as ensuring that we are listening to our families very early on when there are stressors, um, when we see that maybe some of these protective factors are not in place, that we can respond appropriately. And once we do that, we can um, build those additional supports and get the resources. It's critical that we don't just send families from one place to the next, that we really listen and try to problem solve with them. We feel that our solutions are right here in our community. And with them being in our community, um, we, we're really proud of that. And I think Polk, Hardy, and Highlands County are rich with resources. So many times it's just linking and letting individuals and letting local businesses and our faith communities know what the needs are and communicating that effectively so that they, these families can um, get those needs met. Uh, but we have um, so many unique resources out there. We um, offer infant massage for new families that are having new babies and how critical that is is to help teach new moms and dads how to soothe babies so they can calm down versus that crying can add stress, stress to a family and especially for new parents. Other resources are just basic parenting resources that are out there and connecting because we know most parents want to be the best parents they can be mm -hmm. and if they can go and get the right support that mm -hmm. can happen. Absolutely, absolutely. Now Kathy, um, you're the Director of Education, am I correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and I know there's another part of your title okay. that I didn't say, but I'm thinking education, so that's where I'm leading to in this. Uh -huh. Um, in the work that you do, what are some of the education components that, that you get out into the community and provide? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things we, we want to do is educate our community, uh, number one, on protective factors and the importance of infusing them in our community and in families to strengthen them. Um, part of my role in education is actually working with um, and for advocating the children who are in our system. And so um, in that role, you know, we want to make sure that we, we have the systems in place and we're educating our case managers and caregivers on um, the things they need to know about navigating the education system for our kids so that they don't fall behind um, and that they, they can stay on, on par educationally. So there's a couple components of that educational piece. <laughs> so, so Heartland for Children really is, um, you're working with absolutely every part of the family, the trainer. Mm -hmm. um, you are top to bottom making sure that these children's needs are met. Mm -hmm. um, as you move forward in doing the protective factor framework mm -hmm. um, in the upcoming months, what are some of the things that, that you are focused on in, in getting that information into the hands of those that need it? I think, Jane, that um, it's critical for us to look at all of the current systems and services that we are serving families, mm -hmm. then making sure we're right, making the right assessments and looking at each one of those protective factors. If it is, um, let's say, um, parenting and understanding of child development, we want to make sure that we are providing the education and information out there to maybe it is a new relative caregiver or a, a grandparent that is, ha hasn't parented for a while, mm -hmm. but now is having to parent a child because um, the biological parents need some additional support and resources to get to a place where they can ensure safety for the child if the child was to go home. So it's, in, it's important that we make sure as we make a placement into a home that those all those components are there, and if not, what is our plan to ensure that? Wonderful. As we move into summer, I would think that um, protection, the word protection, is, is screaming at me. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I have a 15-year-old son, and during the summer, it would seem that protection would be of the utmost importance, specifically with at-risk kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have summer programming that, that is in place just for that purpose? We actually work with our caregivers and our case management agencies to make sure that our kids are getting um, to be able to have the same experiences that children who aren't in the system have. So we really try and do a great job of matching them up to different summer camps, work, you know, Boys and Girls Club, YMCA activities, all of those types of things, and trying to make sure that they continue to have really healthy development over the summer months. Um, I know, for example, we have, this is a, a great example of just a, a community support 
um, where the Garden Club of Winter Haven recently um, gave us funding to sponsor two children to go to Camp Wakaiva. And so that's a week-long sleepover camp that two young boys who are in foster care, they're, I think the ages were 8 and 11, are going to be able to go away to summer camp this year um, because we had wonderful women in the community at the Garden Club step up and support that. Absolutely, and, um, and I would imagine that your community support is just outstanding. It is, Jane, and I think that if there's any listeners out there that have an interest in how they may want to support a child, whether it is that they have a resource or an idea that they'd like to talk with us, we have Eagle Scouts that contact us that mm -hmm. like to do Eagle Scout projects. We have knitting clubs that like to do blankets for babies and infants that are going into foster care. I'd encourage listeners to call 863-519-8900, um, extension 200, or they can visit our website, which is heartlandforchildren.org, and that's another way they can get connected to us. Terry, Kim, Kathy, thank you so much for coming out and talking with us on Polk Place. Thank you. If you would like to give, contribute, share resources with Heartland for Children, please contact their offices at 863-519-8900, extension 200, or contact them at heartlandforchildren.org. They need you, and you need to show up for them. Resources are needed, and this is a very deserving organization.